Welcome again to Chemist Corner. Today is one of my favorite all-time demonstrations, copper. Look at all the different colors we can make with just simply copper 2 plus ions in solution. To start with, we're going to take copper 2 chloride. The dihydrate is on the left, starts out as kind of a bluish teal. The copper 2 chloride on the right, well, that's kind of a brownish yellow before we hydrate it. But once we add water to both of these, they become the same structure. Copper 2 chloride tetrahydrate. And it turns that greenish color. Now, of course, water is colorless, but if we fully hydrate it, we turn into the copper hexahydrate 2 plus ion, which is a light blue color, which is characteristic of copper ions in solution. The copper 2 chloride tetrahydrate, green. The copper hexahydrate 2 plus, blue. So when I take that partially hydrated copper and wash it off my watch glass into a beaker, you can see the green color starts to go away and the blue color starts to appear. Still, the chlorine is attached to the copper. It's kind of green. The more water I add, the bluer it becomes and the less green it becomes. When I fully hydrate my copper, it all turns into the copper hexahydrate 2 plus ion, that pretty light blue color that we're used to seeing. The green color, the chlorinated copper, has completely disappeared. What we are left with is simply the light blue copper 2 hexahydrate. If we take our copper 2 hexahydrate and add concentrated hydrochloric acid to it, we drive the equilibrium to the far left, reforming the green copper 2 chloride tetrahydrate complex and destroying the light blue copper 2 hexahydrate. Both copper, two very different colors. In the next part of my copper demonstration, I'm going to introduce ammonia to the system. But what is ammonia? Well, it likes to be a gas, but when I bring a solution of concentrated ammonia next to a solution of concentrated hydrochloric acid, I can see they don't stay in solution. Both of them like to fume, give off NH3 and HCl gas, and form solid ammonium chloride in the atmosphere above the solutions. That's why we need to be very careful when we handle ammonia. Of course, for this demonstration, I don't want gaseous ammonia or even liquid ammonia. I want aqueous ammonia. So what does aqueous ammonia really mean? Well, it means the NH3 has actually reacted with the H2O to form an equilibrium system with the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. All four species have been added at the same time when we add this to my copper system. Ammonia molecules, water molecules, ammonium ions and hydroxide ions, all in one drop. Consequently, several different reactions take place in my container all at the same time. This becomes immediately evident when I add concentrated aqueous ammonia to my copper 2 plus solution. On the top, we see a royal blue, a dark blue color. In the middle, a white color that appears to be a precipitate, a solid, and on the bottom, the light green that we saw earlier. This is evidence for quite a few different things happening all at the same time in the same beaker. So what are those reactions that are happening? We already know that when we add aqueous ammonia to our copper solution, we're actually adding four species. Water, NH3, NH4+, the ammonium ion, and the hydroxide ion. So let's go through them one at a time. Adding water to aqueous copper isn't really interesting because, well, it's already attached to water, so that reaction has already happened. However, when we add ammonia to aqueous copper 2 plus, the reaction is quite dramatic. It forms that royal blue tetraamino copper complex, CuNH34 with a 2 plus, dissolved in water. That's the royal blue that we saw on top. That's the top layer. The third species in my drop of aqueous ammonia is the ammonium ion. The ammonium ion is positively charged, as is the copper 2 plus ion. Like charges repel, 
they simply push each other away. No reaction. On the other hand, the fourth species in our droplet is the hydroxide ion. The hydroxide ion is negatively charged, the copper is positively charged, and opposite charges attract. The ion-ion attraction results in the formation of a precipitate, copper 2 hydroxide. That was the white powder that we saw. Once again, if we start with the light blue aqueous copper 2 plus ion and add concentrated hydrochloric acid to it, we drive the equilibrium to the left and form the green solution of the copper 2 chloride tetrahydrate. To that, we add concentrated ammonia and see a multiplicity of reactions, the royal blue of the amino complex, the white powder of the copper 2 hydroxide precipitate, and we still maintain some of the copper 2 chloride solution in the bottom. The copper 2 hexahydrate is the light blue solution. When mixed with the less dense ammonia, it forms the tetraamino complex, which is the royal blue, and it floats on top. When additional concentrated aqueous ammonia is added to this system, we find that the ammonia plus water reaction seems to take precedence. More hydroxide ions are formed, Consequently, more copper 2 hydroxide precipitate is formed. When the mixture is stirred, the creamy white precipitate is evidence for the formation of a low solubility product, the copper 2 hydroxide solid. The addition of more concentrated aqueous ammonia changes the balance of this equilibrium. Now we have a surplus of NH3 molecules which connect directly with the copper 2 plus, forming that royal blue solution. When stirred, all of the precipitate dissolves, replaced by the royal blue copper tetraamino complex. The addition of concentrated aqueous hydrochloric acid to this system has several consequences. Note that when I bring the hydrochloric acid close to my amino-containing solution, I get that ammonium chloride solid forming in the air as the two solutions fume. The chloride ion can attach directly to the central copper ion and reform that copper 2 chloride tetrahydrate complex, resulting in a decrease in the blue color and an increase in the green color of the solution. In addition, the hydrogen ion can neutralize the hydroxide ion, which of course would form water molecules. This in turn reduces the concentration of hydroxide ions in solution, causing a shift of this equilibrium away from the solid and towards the aqueous copper ions, which causes the solid to dissolve and the light blue copper 2 plus solution to replace it. Additionally, the hydrogen ions can attach to the ammonia molecules, forming ammonium ions, which in turn repel the copper 2 plus ions, destroying the royal blue complex, causing a decrease in the blue color and an increase in the green color due to the chloride ions still being present. If you enjoyed this little demonstration of the various colors of copper when mixed with chloride, hydroxide, ammonia, and water, please Subscribe to my channel, comment below, tell all your friends. See you again at Chemist's Corner.